After playing for some time with geometry nodes, I feel confident enough to record and share my first proper tutorial for Blender. Until now I have mainly posted short video tips on Twitter, but this one wouldn't fit there so I'm going with YouTube this time. This is how I created my text waves in honeycombs project. I tried my best to keep it short and to the point and hope you like it and also learn something new. Make sure you're in wireframe mode to check the results. Let's start with a mesh circle that has 6 vertices and a radius of 2. Add a duplicate elements node, set the type of elements to faces and for the moment increase the amount to 5. Nothing seems to have changed, that's because all the faces are overlapping. Continue by adding a scale elements node. We want to scale our duplicate faces based on their index number. Let's divide the duplicate index by the total number of duplicates. This will fit the index number into a percentage value. The attribute statistics node gets us the maximum number of face indices. Feed the division result to the scale socket. Let's convert the mesh to curves and just for preview purposes append a curved points node so we can visualize the vertices of our newly generated splines. Insert a subdivide curve node and drive the count number with a duplicate index field. Now each spline going outwards has one more point per segment creating a cool looking pattern. Keep in mind that the first spline, which has an index of 0, is scaled down completely so the spline length is 0, but still has many overlapping points. When used for instancing later on, this spline will generate many overlapping instances. To get around this, we'll use a resample node with a count of 1. This will return spline segments with only one point. But we only want this operation to affect the first curve. So we will filter out the curve with the index equal to 0. Feed the result to the selection input socket of the resample curve node. After a closer look, I noticed that we can further optimize the packing of the characters if the second curve is not subdivided. So I'm subtracting 1 from the duplicate index number before connecting it to the subdivide count socket. We have now created a fully procedural setup. Experiment by increasing the number of duplicate elements. Also you are not limited to just hexagons. A circle with 3 or 4 vertices works great too. You can now delete the curve points node. Continuing where we left off, let's group this node tree so we can easily use it as a preset whenever we need it. Create group inputs for the number of vertices, radius and duplicate number. Also a group output for the duplicate index field. Rename the group honeycomb. Add a text to curve node and type some letters into it. I'm going with the alphabet. We'll instance the letters on the points of our generated honeycomb. Check the pick instance toggle. Now don't let the apparent mess scare you. Lower the text size and choose midpoint from the pivot point drop down. This sets the center of the bounding box for each character as its pivot. What does the pivot point represent? In one sentence it is the offset of each character from the instance local center. Let's zero out this offset. Scale this vector by negative 1 and use the scaled vector as the new position. The characters seem to jump into place. Now they are scrambled but feeding the duplicate index into the instance index socket will sort them out. Each row matches the index of the characters. To invert the order so that the characters start counting from the outside towards the center, tab into our node group, add a math node and subtract the duplicate index from the max index number. 
feed the result back to the group output socket. Now let's take care of the orientation. It will be determined by the normal direction of our honeycomb shape points. We'll make use of the align Euler to vector node to convert the normal direction vector into an XYZ rotation vector. Feed normal to vector input socket and choose Y as the axis to align. The characters seem pointing outwards, but if you want it otherwise, you can manually offset their orientation with a rotate Euler node. Change the Z axis value to make them point inwards. You can also link the number of characters to that of duplicates. Feed the string input to a group input socket, that way we can change the text without having to go into the node tree. Add a string length node and link its output to the duplicate input socket. Now every character that we type will add a new row to our figure. You can play around with the number of sides and radius. Add a Feel Curve node and choose Angons mode. Continue with an Extrude Mesh node and leave the offset scale value to 1. Instead of realizing the instances and extruding characters individually, we'll just scale the instances themselves on the z-axis. Add a Combine XYZ node. Set all the values to 1. We'll scale them in a wavy motion, so we'll definitely need a math sine node. A sine wave's amplitude oscillates from negative 1 to 1, but we'll use range map to make it go from 0 to 1. The frequency of this wave will be the index number of our honeycomb rows. Add a multiply node to adjust this frequency to your liking. All fine and good, except we want this wave animated. I will now reveal a little secret that will make sure our animation loops no matter the length of our scene. Add a scene time node, feed the frame output to a map range node, go to the frame range tab on the output properties panel, right click over the frame start value and choose copy as a new driver. Then right click on the from minimum value field and choose paste driver. Also, copy the frame and value as a new driver and again paste driver on the from maximum value field. Leave the to minimum value to zero and on the to maximum field type hashtag four times two times pi. 2 times pi is a full circle, so 4 times 2 pi means that during the length of the timeline the wave will repeat itself 4 times. I added a hashtag forcing Blender to add a driver just so that any time I click to tweak this value the expression will show up and I only need to update the number of cycles without worrying about remembering the rest of the formula. Now, add the result of this node together with the row index multiplier and feed the sum to the math sign node. Hit play. We have just animated the characters in a perpetual rolling wave motion. As the last step, let's clone this honeycomb some more. This node tree is getting too crowded, so let's continue the setup into another one. Geometry nodes, being modifiers, can be stacked on top of each other. Go to the Modifiers tab and add a new Geometry node modifier. Click the New button and create a node tree whose input geometry is the result of the previous node tree. Remember that we made a preset of the honeycomb pattern earlier? Let's reuse that template. We'll instance our already animated geometry to the points of this honeycomb. The radius is too small, so the instances are overlapping. 
Also remember to rotate each instance by 30 degrees on the z-axis so they fit perfectly together. I will leave it here. You can go on and tweak the settings to your liking. I hope you have all learned something new. And don't forget, if you like the video, share the knowledge.